Today's interview guest is Matthijs Buchli. Matthijs Buchli is silver medalist at the Rio Olympics in the track cycling event Kairin. Matthijs shares his story with us, how he got injured five months before the Rio Olympics, how that messed up his whole plan preparation and how he was in doubt where to put his focus on in the lead up to the Olympic Games to be in the top shape at the event when it matters most. Matthijs outlines how he considers confidence as his secret weapon, but confidence is a balancing act. Too much of it can be counterproductive. While you need to accept that there are more bad moments than good moments, and how he learned to see what is important and what is not important, and to put no energy into what is not important. So without any further ado, let's jump into the interview. Today I'm here with Matthijs Buchli. Matthijs is track cyclist. Matthijs won the silver medal in the Kairin event at the Rio Olympics 2016. And Matthijs and me have been training for probably five to six years together now, right? Long time. <laughs> long time. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> no, no, it's still good. <laughs> okay, so welcome Matthijs. Okay, let's start with the first question. What was your darkest moment? Considering uh, training and cycling, I think it was uh, five months before Olympics. I got a strange knee injury, nobody knew what it was. I missed the first one and two training camps heading up to uh, the Olympics. So I missed actually the endurance part of the, of the training. And then I was in doubt, should I, when it was solved, do I start over with endurance? And I'm actually very late in planning. And then we actually skipped the endurance thing and uh, I just got in with the guys and we started with the more intense training and still I could make it to Rio, uh, which was really cool, of course. Yeah. And um, how did you recover from that moment? Well, on the one side it was, of course, I had to take rest in a period where you didn't uh, want to take, you don't want to take rest. So on the one side it was just give your body rest, which is really hard for your mind, of course, because that's the moment you don't want to have rest. Yeah. Um, but I think most important is just to keep faith that you can recover and can still do it in uh, another way than, than should be the perfect way. Okay, interesting. What was your best moment? Uh, the best moment was a few months later. <laughs> 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 yeah, then uh, I made Rio. I made the team uh, at the test event. Then uh, I went to Rio in a good shape and the knee was fine. And uh, yeah, then... I won a silver medal at the Kirin event, which is a sprint event on the track. And uh, yeah, this day was a flow. Uh, first heat, I think I was sec, I was second. Uh, second heat, I was second, and in the final also, I got a second place. And this is one day where everything comes together. And uh, yeah, that was maybe the yeah that was for sure the best moment of my career. I still remember that sitting in front of the television <laughs> and see you yeah, getting cool. that medal. That was really cool, yeah. What did you learn from that moment? How, I mean, obviously it has influenced your life. I mean, you are considered one of the best track cyclists now because you've proven the result. What else did change and how did it influence your life? I think on the one hand it gives you a bit of uh, ease in the mind. It's more rest. You somehow have got that life achievement that you well, would have fought for your whole life and then you have it at your first Olympics. So in your head it gives a lot of rest. Ah, you have this Olympic medal. And it also gives you confidence because uh, you know you can do it and you know you're still not on your best. Um, yeah, so it, it, it gives a lot of peace of mind for the, for the next four years. And uh, But also... You know you can do better, because I know I was not at my best in Rio, and there you can get silver. And then you're like, oh, then maybe I can get the gold next time. So that's a really nice position to go to the next Olympics. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But now you can really go for gold instead of um, a medal, for example. Mm, cool. Yeah. Setting the bar, setting the... Uh, yeah, the bar is higher high. now, yeah. Nice. Okay, so the next question, if you could go back in time, like 10 or 15 years ago, which advice would you give your younger you from all the lessons you've learned? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, maybe um, it would be that it's okay to ask a lot of people for advice. I tend to do, uh, like to do find my own way and 
but it's also good to ask people like how do you think what do you think about it what do you think about it and everybody has a different view so in my opinion it's nice to uh, hear a lot of voices and hear what everybody thinks i think that's good advice and uh, one thing i also learned from these years and maybe i could have told myself earlier is that there's so many ways that lead to what you want so for example if the perfect way doesn't work or the second perfect way also you cannot do it there's still so many ways you can achieve what you want so don't lose faith if you have some breakdowns or bad things you can still work around that and you don't know what, what it has been good for, so it's still possible. Yeah. Okay, cool. What do you think are the habits that make you a successful athlete or successful person? Well, I think maybe most important is faith in yourself, so confidence. Um, maybe I even had too much confidence when I was young. I always thought like, ah, okay, I I can, I think I can do that. I can maybe get gold. I'm, I think I can get the Olympic medal. Well, I actually didn't yet know. <laughs> that I had talent or whatever. So in the basic, I always had some confidence in myself that I could have done these things. If why, if he can do it, I cannot, you know? So I always thought, yeah, I can do that. Uh, so I think that's really important. Just have confidence in yourself. Also, if there's not a big basis for that. Other thing is, I think most important is that you keep going when you have struggles or bad things mm. like injuries or crashes or whatever. You just, you have so much more bad, uh, I like bad moments than good moments. You you lose so much more than you win and you crash many times and you get injured and you have setbacks and keep going, keep going. I think everyone has that and you have to overcome it and just yeah. continue. I think I can, I'm good in continuing with good yeah. faith, even if it goes bad, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think I can also see that if I look back at the at your career, the way the time we worked together. So there were so many moments where you know your back didn't hold up or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, you always came back, and I mean, you always started over again or continued with what you were doing. Yeah, and and, and I think also uh, sometimes you think, oh, this is really bad. Now I cannot ride for three weeks or whatever. But then still. You always somehow recover faster than you think. You're back at your level faster than you think. Yeah. So uh, that's one thing I noticed. Yeah. Okay, cool. Next question, do you have a morning routine or any routine that you're using to bring yourself in the best shape for the day? Yeah, well, it depends really on the, on the season's planning. Like if I have a training week where you have to train, but it's not really, really important, then I don't really have routines, it can be either way. But for example, if we have a training camp and a really hard three weeks block, I wanna do everything right. And then like a normal routine for me would be, uh, you get up, you take a shower, then I have a breakfast with with everything, like proteins, carbohydrates, slow ones, fast ones, like everything. Then, uh, then I go do some stretching and warm up for the gym, do the gym training, and cool down with a little bit of course stability, go back to the hotel, have a lunch, then go to bed <laughs> and uh, have some bed rest. And then uh, you go training again and then uh, dinner and some stretching at the end of the day. And then you go to sleep. Very that's regimented, yeah. Yeah, like, a, yeah, that's the real routine of the day. Oh, yeah. that's the whole day actually, not only yeah. morning. <laughs> But uh, yeah. yeah, morning routine would be like some breakfast, some shower, and some stretching mm. for me. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you prepare yourself for important moments, especially competition? Well, uh, of course, preparation is key. So, uh, the preparation starts like months before a competition. So, I try to see the big uh, picture of the whole planning. And here I can be can kind of do easy training. Here I have to really focus. So I choose my moments to really get all out of it and get some more relaxation. So it's all about balance. Mm. And uh, just keep a good balance in the lead up to your big race and then it should come all together. Mm. And then I remember that moment in Rio, the first heat of the final. Then I think you were second right and then the yeah. race was stopped 
Yeah, yeah. And you had to do it again, right? So yeah, yeah. What, what? So for those, I think we can also later put it somewhere. There's a video out there. But what happened is the, the race started. Matthijs was in a good position, and then the race was stopped and had to start again. So what went through your head? Yeah, that was really strange. Uh, I never. It's maybe also a thing. Olympics probably are always different than your other races. So for, for me, this was also the case. And I never experienced that before, that they stop a race two or three times and have a restart over and over again. Um, but what I do remember is actually there was nothing in my head at all. <laughs> so people say, hey, why you didn't freak out or you you seem so calm and i'm like yeah I, I actually had no thoughts at all i was just okay we go again later and then i ride some laps on the infield and there was actually nothing going through my head and why do you think that was i think we really learned to uh, to see what is important and and don't put energy in things that are unimportant so when a race gets they shoot and it's over and you start again Of course, it's it's not nice, but if you lose energy in in mocking around about it, like ah oh, fuck, uh, start again. I think yeah, you shouldn't do that. So mm. I think it's more that I don't want to focus on the bad things, so I just keep a clear head and and go again. Mm. Like accept situation. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. And I mean, the result was good. Yeah. Again, so. <laughs> in the end, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we touched about on that before. How do you overcome setbacks, so especially if things don't go your way? Yeah, as I said before, you. I think it's important to know that there's many ways that lead to Rome or many ways that lead to victory or, or whatever. So you want to do the perfect way, but maybe it's impossible to do the perfect way. You have always, You will always have setbacks, so it's good to know you can work around it. And there's many other ways to, to get there. Hmm. Okay, cool. Who's your role model and why? <laughs> I actually have no idea. Um, I never really had a role model or a hero or, or whatever in my own sport. I, I do see a lot of things I like. For example, this cyclist has this, then another one has that. But... I think I just want to be myself at four first, but uh, of course there's some skills that one guy has, I want that, but then he lacks, has lack of other skills, for example. So maybe, maybe that says there's not a perfect rider or a perfect role model. Maybe that's the conclusion. <laughs> you can get, I, I get a lot of out of everyone. Mm -hmm. I see some nice things, but there's not one person I would say this is the guy. No. Okay, cool. What is the best advice you have received and who gave it to you? A really hard one. Um, maybe it's more the sum of uh, small bits of advice. I mean, uh, like one particular thing I, I cannot recall. I think it's the sum of small advices that that are really important. For example, just outline a few advices that you um, received at some point and then... Well, for example, uh, one thing that my old coach, Rene Wolf, used to say, sometimes when you choose to follow one path, for example, with training or with racing or... And it's it's a it's a road of for example one year. It's possible that after six months you think ah doesn't feel so good. Maybe you should do something else. And of course that's possible. But sometimes you also need to see it through. So do the full year. Maybe after one year is different. Like if you choose one road, then go full for this thing. Mm -hmm. Go 100 percent and then don't quit in the middle because it's you're in doubt. It's, it's normal to have doubt, but just continue this way. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that could be a really good one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, how does a typical training day look like? I mean, we spoke about that on a training camp, but any other things 
you want to mention how your training yeah if, like? you, if you look at for example a, a training week uh, we will do for example two or three times gym in the week followed by track training in the afternoon so you would have uh, for example monday gym track wednesday gym track uh, friday gym track so gym in the morning track in the afternoon tuesday and thursday you could do also track training or endurance on the road so that's normal training like gym track um, that's really normal training then okay yeah and then what do you do in between the trainings eat eat and nap eat and nap <laughs> that's yeah. good recovery yeah. is important yeah. Yeah. It's, that's it actually yeah okay cool so where can people find you and uh, find more about you? So the videos from the Olympics, we put it, if it's on YouTube, we put it in the description. If it's on my website also, there will be a link to it. Yeah. So we can see that. People want to offer you a sponsorship. Where do they find you best? <laughs> uh, I think just check out my Instagram account. That's where, uh, where I post my stuff on. And check out uh, beatcyclingclub.com okay. and uh, the team. They follow us a lot and uh, they bring a lot of videos and photos. Okay. So that's cool to check out too. Okay, cool. Thanks for your time, Matthijs. No worries, thank you. It's, it's both, it gives you... Schlager? Deutsche Schlager music? It comes from there. Uh, okay, so that was an interesting one. Luckily, we <laughs> luck, luckily we have editing programs. So <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Back to back to so um, I think you left off with um, it gives you confidence. Interesting points, right? I like how adamant Matthijs is about confidence and keeping faith. What did you find most interesting? Is it that there are different ways to achieve your goal? Or is it not to put energy into things you can't change? Leave it in the comments below. And if you have any further questions you would like me to ask Matthijs, put them in the comments below and I will get Matthijs onto the camera to answer these questions.